Modern Animal Rights Activism Tactics Part Investigative Journalism, Part Corporate Warfare How PETA's expose of the monkey imports by the largest experimenter in the U.S. could bring us closer to ending animal experimentation. Oh, that's with a little help from the SEC. Next on The PETA Podcast with Emil Guillermo. Welcome to The PETA Podcast. I'm Emil Guillermo, your host for this inside look at animal rights. Brought to you by PETA, the largest animal rights organization in the world. On today's episode, it's a case study in progress how PETA is on the verge of toppling Charles River Laboratories, one of the largest experimenters and monkey importers in the world. One problem did the publicly traded Charles River Labs lie to shareholders about bringing wild caught monkeys? to America to be tortured for useless experiments. Just importing wild-caught monkeys would be a violation. Did shareholders know? PETA, a shareholder, filed a complaint with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and now the SEC is investigating. And it may be the straw that breaks the experimenters back, as now Charles River is talking about beginning to explore non-animal methods. Just a ruse or for real? PETA isn't letting up now that it's uncovered documents, that's the journalistic aspect, that's making the SEC look into Charles River's questionable importation of wild monkeys. Dr. Lisa Jones-Engel, PETA primatologist, once again breaks down the Charles River Labs case and how it could be the beginning of the last chapter in animal experimentation. My conversation with Dr. Lisa Jones-Engel on The PETA Podcast with Emil Guillermo. This is really a, a case that shows how animal activism is fought these days. And increasingly, it's done in the boardrooms. It's done uh, as shareholders complaining about how a corporation misbehaves. And PETA is a shareholder of Charles River. We are. And, and to your point, This fight is also a fight about something that PETA does really well, which is we got into the weeds. We dug so deeply into, you know, what other folks would just kind of discard as just kind of meaningless paperwork, but which we saw these certificates of veterinary inspection, this movement of monkeys. I mean, that was kind of, those were the, those were the glowing documents for us because that, that allowed us to follow monkeys from this monkey farm in Cambodia to another farm here, to Charles Rivers. And the funny thing is, no one else was doing it but PETA, right? I don't know whether it's funny. I, I think it is a sign of activism is changing. And these companies are getting incredibly sophisticated. They've always dealt in secrecy. And I think what they understand now is that they're up against activist opponents who, who know which doors to open. We, we know which file cabinet to pull a drawer out from. We know which agency to poke and say, hey, I need this document. And boy, they're afraid because now we've got, we've got the keys. We, we've got the receipts. Yeah. Literally, we have the receipts. Yeah, the evidence. Okay, so let's go to the beginning. The complaint filed with the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission. This is important because you're, you're saying that the SEC should investigate Charles River Labs. Tell me the significance, tell me the complaint and the significance of the complaint. So last we went, we went to the Division of Enforcement at the SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. And the thing about the SEC is it's, it's about the money. It's about protecting, making sure that companies are being responsible to the shareholders who invest in those companies. And so the SEC is, is that watchdog. And we've certainly, we've seen in the past that the SEC will crack down on companies that have engaged in activities that have cost shareholders money. And what we understood, the kind of the conclusion that we came to with Charles River is, you know what, Charles River, you don't seem to care about the endangered status of monkeys. You don't seem to care about the disease risks that you're bringing in here, 
you don't seem to care about the fact that these monkeys are just not good models. You know what you do care about? You care about money. You care about profit. And we are going to go at you from that angle. And we're going to use the SEC to do it. And it's, it's a, this complaint is a thing of beauty. I mean, I mean, it's 360 pages long. It's, um, and it's just clean and because what, it's not. Well, what do you ask, what do you ask that the SEC do? And what do you, what are you alleging that was done by Charles River? So what we, to kind of sum it up in a nutshell, where you said to the SEC, we need you to investigate Charles Rivers' claims to its shareholders and also to its clients, the people who are buying the monkeys. Charles Rivers claims that they are only using purpose-bred monkeys, that they're only supplying purpose-bred monkey. So let me explain for a second what a purpose-bred monkey is. A purpose-bred monkey is basically, it's the, it's kind of the bedrock of the biomedical industry. And it is a monkey who has been born and raised and followed in captivity, who has purposely been kind of created, raised in a controlled environment where you know the parents, you know the health status, you've had veterinarians who have been monitoring them from, from birth, they're supposed to be clean and disease-free, well characterized. It's the the essence of what is considered to be the appropriate biomedical model, a purpose-bred monkey. Contrast that with a wild-caught monkey. The two are, they're just different beings. Well, if you get a wild-caught monkey, do you get different results or better results? Is there a reason why they'd want wild-caught monkeys? Or is it the only reason why they want a wild-caught monkey is because it decreases their cost of acquisition, say? The only reason anyone would use a wild caught monkey is if they thought they could get away with it. And as you said, because it's cheaper and it's easier to get your hands ironically on a wild caught monkey than it is a purpose bred monkey. And that is a reflection of what we've known for decades, which is monkeys. You can't breed them in captivity. It just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work to take these highly social animals put them in these small cages or put the, them in these corrals, divorced of all of their social systems, divorced of everything that makes them a monkey, and expect them to produce infants, offspring. It, it doesn't work. The moms aren't, you know, they don't know how to be good moms because they've never learned. The, the male that's in with them tends to be really aggressive. Diseases run through and it just, so just, to try to get a purpose-bred monkey, yeah, you get some, you get a you know a, a small number, but that number has never been big enough to feed this industry. So this provides a motive in order to get the monkey population up, they have to supplement the purpose-bred with the wild caught, and while it's legal to deal with purpose-bred monkeys, it's not legal to take the wild monkey. You know what? This is where it gets even more complicated. And this is part of the SEC complaint. So let me see if I can break this down. Some countries allow wild caught monkeys to be exported to the U.S. For example, Mauritius allows wild caught monkeys. Indonesia allows wild caught monkeys. Cambodia does not allow wild caught monkeys. But even if a country allows wild caught monkeys, the first question that you should be asking this industry is, why would you use a wild caught monkey? If that monkey, a wild caught monkey, just think about them as an incredibly heterogeneous, un, uncontrolled monkey. And wow, in the biomedical industry, you don't like heterogeneity. You don't like, they want control and a wild monkey on every immunological and behavioral and biological variable is an uncontrolled animal. Wow, so it makes the science even worse than it could be. Let me give you an example to this. And this, I think it's, it gives you a sense of actually how bad it is right now. A few months ago, Novo Nordisk, you know, a huge pharmaceutical company, actually the, the company that is responsible for Ozempic, as a matter of fact, 
A few months ago, Novo Nordis announced in an interview, whoops, sorry, we just learned that our American company that we acquired called Discerna apparently used wild monkeys in some of our studies. We we did not want to use wild, wild monkeys. This is Novo Nordis talking. Um, we didn't think we were using wild monkeys. This is a new company. They apparently didn't understand the rules, like you don't use wild monkeys in, in biomedical experiments, but they did. And so now we need to go back and do those experiments because, and again, this is Novo Nordis, huge pharmaceutical company, saying any scientist worth their salt knows you don't use wild monkeys. Yeah, but what happens now, if they have to redo the experiments, they have to take new monkeys and torture more monkeys to get the kind of results that aren't going to yield anything in the first place, right? Yes. And let me give you another example. If you humor me on this one. Yeah. Another paper very recently published here in the U.S., pharmaceutical company, they were um, testing a, a drug that they had, and they, they had 42 monkeys on it, 42 long-tailed macaques. They put in their experimental compound, they pulled the bits and pieces out of the monkeys, and they were like, oh, gosh, you know, there's we see in some of our animals, there's liver toxicity. And they were like, oh, gosh, golly gee willikers, our our drug must be causing damage to the liver, liver toxicity. So I guess we can't use it. 42, 42, 42 monkeys were used on this study. Someone went back and thought, God, that just seems so weird because even our control animals, the monkeys who did not receive our experimental drug, some of them showed liver toxicity. They went back to their necropsy samples in the freezer and they realized, well, good grief, some of these supposedly purpose-bred, clean, healthy monkeys actually had hepatitis A oh, infections. Boy. So what this meant was this company, one, if they hadn't realized that, that drug would have stayed on the shelf because it had proven to be toxic in the, the monkey model. So what do you do with that? You stick it back on the shelf. They realized that, but that meant they went out and they used another 42 monkeys. You know, I mean, 42 monkeys is the average size of a long-tailed macaque troop, an entire troop of monkeys. This experiment, for one experimental drug, went through two troops of macaques and who knows how much money they spent again because what we have what we understand now is that inside this whole pipeline are these wild caught non-purpose bred monkeys all right so we know the difference between the wild caught you can't you shouldn't use them you should use purpose bred monkeys but there's not enough of them so people are wild catching them charles river you found the documents, I guess, through Freedom of Information Act. That's how you found out. And it, it you document the the travel of the monkeys from from Cambodia to the United States. It was actually it's it took a few more steps than that. So you know what Charles River did back in February of 2023 when we first learned that they had been subpoenaed, and we first learned that you know. A thousand plus monkeys that they had imported from Cambodia had been um, refused clearance by Fish and Wildlife. At about that time, Charles River came out and said, "Hey, the that bad farm in Cambodia, that Vanny farm, that's not our supplier. We we don't don't look at us. Those we don't get our monkeys from that that farm. We don't get. We do not have a direct supply, uh -huh. and they use the word direct." What we discovered was, okay, yeah, Charles River, you don't have a direct supply. What you do is you wait for worldwide primates to import thousands of monkeys into the U.S., into their facility in Florida, and then you buy monkeys from them, and you then sell those monkeys or you use those monkeys in your studies. And so maybe it's not direct. Is it still illegal? Well... I is it still illegal? That's we're going to wait for the DOJ to sort that one out because what we learned recently in that Miami trial that took place about the Cambodian the Cambodian official who was indicted and arrested and went on trial he was ultimately acquitted. But what we learned in that trial, which was so clear, were a couple of things. One, Charles River Laboratories was considered a VIP client of this monkey farm, Vanny. 
and two, Worldwide Primates and Orion Bioresources, aka Innative. Man, they were just monkeys were flowing from this farm, this Vanny farm in Cambodia, into these facilities here in the US. And so your complaint to the SEC, does it have the effect of possibly shutting down that flow of monkeys that you refer to, the flow of wild monkeys? And can it can it hamper or punish Charles River Labs for what they are alleged to have done? What this complaint is focused on is basically calling Charles River to the mat because they've lied to their shareholders. They have said in their their SEC filings, in their public statements, in their response to us, when we we go to them, they were saying, hey, we don't. We only use purpose-bred monkeys. We had nothing to do with these Cambodian monkeys. Go away. And what this complaint lays out for the SEC is, we can show you how Charles River is using these monkeys. They may not be they may not be importing them directly, but they are certainly using these monkeys that are coming in from this facility. And this is in the Cambodian one. And then we also show how Charles River has been selling wild caught monkeys mm. to its clients. To other people. So Charles River Labs, one of the biggest employer players in Boston. How how large are they in terms of um as an experiment firm that, that uses monkeys? Are they the largest in the country? They're the largest in the world, as far as we know. Largest in the world. So it, you're going after the top people or the top company, and you seemingly have the goods. What can the SEC do? Can they shut them down? Can they say, stop your actions? Or can they? what can they do for, on behalf of the shareholders? Because the SEC is out there protecting the shareholders, too. The SEC is to protect the shareholders. The SEC can can levy astonishingly large fines. We're not talking the the pittance that the USDA occasionally comes out and slaps somebody with. We're talking, you know, tens of millions of dollars in fines, and it has to do with basically the 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 scope, the sheer scale of the deception that Charles River has been engaged in with their shareholders. Well, let's talk about how many monkeys are we talking about? Because if you're talking about tens of millions of dollars in fines, um, is that just because of the value per monkey or is it because of the number of monkeys is so large? Because we mentioned a troop is 48. How many troops are we talking about of macaques? How, how large is this, is this uh, alleged transgression on the part of uh, Charles River? So what, again, one of the things that we learned during the the trial, um, back in March, is that during this investigation from 2017 to 2022, an estimated 50,000 long-tailed macaques were brought into that Vanny farm. Wild caught, long-tailed, 50,000 of them, and 30,000 of those animals made their way. To the U.S. Wow, thirty thousand. And how much per monkey? What What does a monkey cost on? You know, when, when Charles River is selling, using them, and also selling them to clients. What are we talking about? So, you know, I think a, a nice average number in that period of time. Let's go with forty thousand, because you know it's over the past couple of years that number has hit close to sixty thousand. Wow, that's a lot. So I don't. What's thirty thousand times forty thousand? Not and actually, you know what? Not all of those went to Charles River. Absolutely. But we are talking, I think there's a billion in that. There's there's a whole lot of zeros. Yeah, it broke my computer. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> there's a whole lot of zeros with, with that. And and so this is not, I mean, this is not insignificant. The, this is why nope. the, the SEC, I mean, and, and in Boston, where, like I said, Charles River is, uh, employs a lot of people. I mean, it's a big, it's a big local story, but also a big national and international story. If what comes out of these sales could impact people worldwide who might be waiting for some kind of drug to come out of these experiments, which they probably won't because you know the experiments don't really yield that much, but people around the world who are hoping for something good. Exactly. I mean, there are so many things wrong with this, you know, the, the corruption, the secrecy, the, the violation of of national and apparently international laws. The 
the violation of scientific integrity. All of that is wrapped up in this. Charles River sees the writing on the walls here. So early last week, we didn't know this was coming. Charles River made an announcement. They are committing a half billion, with a B, a half billion dollars towards the development of non-animal methods, new alternative methods, they're, NAMs. They're joining animal rights groups, it seems. I Exactly. You know, they, and as, you know, I'm not going to say too little too late because I, I think Charles, this is, Charles River is going to start something here. If the globe's biggest consumer of monkeys is saying, all right, we are com committing a half billion dollars towards not using animals in our, our drug testing. That's basically saying to the rest of the pharmaceutical industry, this is, this is the direction we're going. This is the pivot we are taking. Now, do I think that PETA being all up in their business for the last several years has a thing to do with this? Yes. Do I think the FDA Modernization Act has something to do with this? Yes. Which sounds a lot like PETA's research modernization deal, just saying that. Do I think that the IUCN listing these animals as endangered and PETA trying to get them moved up into the endangered species list has something to do with it? Yes. But I also think that pharma understands that the ultimate goal is to get the drug into the human's arm, and you do that as cheaply as you can. And if you have to keep reusing a whole troop of monkeys because your monkeys are not clean and not purpose-bred and are not giving you the right answer, then you are going to start looking at alternative methods. And Charles River is throwing the gauntlet down here. Well, they they are at least smart enough to put up what seems to be a white flag to the animal rights activists in some way. Yeah, and, and that's that's nice. That's not going to stop me from um, going in going in hard on them on May 8th when I take our shareholder proxy um, to the, the meeting and ask them, you know, why will you not tell your shareholders exactly where every single monkey that you're importing comes from? Why are you pushing back so hard about telling us, your shareholders, the type of zoonotic diseases that have been coming in with these, these animals? So I like the white flag, but it's not going to stop me from charging. Yeah, I mean, the resolution that you're preparing, uh, it's going to be on May 8th. And that is, uh, once again, another part of the modern animal rights activism that we see to make people move, to make people get off the dime. You, you got to go to the boardrooms and you got to go with these shareholder proposals. And it sounds like this resolution. Do you know what the resolution says specifically? Do you know uh, what you, what you're asking for? So what it is, we asked that the, the company to disclose whether it was only importing purpose-fed primates, as well as the procedures that they used to screen for and to report for the presence of zoonotic diseases among the animals. Charles River, they didn't like that. Now, keep in mind, this is similar to the resolution that we put in last year, the resolution that got 33% of the shareholder votes. 33%. I mean, that, that was unheard of, Emil. And of course, Charles River, as they're as we're going back and forth on this one this time, they're like, ah, you lost two to one last time. Ah, you know, we we told you we were going to give you some information. And I'm like, folks, you know, you say I lost two to one. I say I got a third of the shareholders to vote with us because they want to know this. And this time, as we were going back and forth with Charles River's lawyers, in the end, they said, all right, fine. Um, we still don't want this in. We're, we're going to fight against it. But we're going to change. Rather than saying that we only import purpose bread, we're going to change our language and say that we only acquire, um, what was the word that they used? Um, animals that are legally sourced. There we go. It was something like that. Legally sourced, yeah. So, so it makes it sound like, well, we, we, we didn't break any laws. They weren't, they may, we not have been, they may not have been, they may have been wild caught, but we didn't break any laws. Well, so, exactly. but this is apt to upset some shareholders who all they care about is whether the stock price goes up or down. 
and it sounds like you might get more shareholders behind you. Uh, accidental animal rights activists, perhaps, but they care. Well, they they care about the dollar. They care yeah. about the the profit. And if and I, I hope some of them actually care about the science as well. And again, it's it's all stacking up. I mean, it's it's and the fact that Charles River acknowledged that with this massive investment. Okay, I'll I'll take that, but that does it. I I need them to stop now. I mean, they they're still importing monkeys right now. They're still bringing in monkeys from Mauritius. They're still bringing in monkeys from Vietnam. They're bringing in animals who are infected with deadly zoonotic diseases. They're still bringing in wild caught animals, um, and that that can't go on. And I think. What the SEC investigation is going to do is really hold their feet to the fire. And my hope is that Charles River is going to say, all right, you know what? Let's throw a billion dollars at non-animal methods. Let's, let's get the money where it needs to be. And that does not mean using money to import monkeys. And that's how you get to progress. So right now, what we're looking at is this kind of forest to monkey farm to pharma. And what we actually need to be is pharma focusing on non-animal methods. And I think we're, we're getting there. Not fast enough, but we've, it's, it was like this, this, there's a huge step that's been made recently, Emil, and I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it and i i'm i'm trusting that the sec is going to the, keep in mind the sec was already investigating charles river before we put in this complaint they already knew something was wrong and what we've given them is 350 pages showing them the path to bad behavior dr lisa jones engel PETA primatologist explaining the SEC complaint about Charles River Labs. Uh, Lisa, thank you again for spelling it out for us and breaking it down. And good luck on May 8th. Thank you very much. Dr. Lisa Jones, Engel, PETA primatologist on the Charles River Labs case the SEC is investigating. We'll be following up. You can see more about the story at PETA.org. And that's our show for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to send a link of this show to your friends. Tell them you like the PETA podcast. Of course you do. You can find me on Twitter, at Emil Amok. That's E-M-I-L-A-M-O-K, or shall I say X, formerly known as Twitter. Or see my vlog at amok.com. Or see my work at ALDEF, the... Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. That's ALDEF, A-A-L-D-E-F dot org slash blog. Or see my one-man show, Emil Amuck, Lost NPR host and other Amuck monologues. It's at the Orlando Fringe Festival this May. And you can get this podcast on YouTube at Emil Amuck One. <laughs>